Welcome back everybody to yet another beautiful sunshiny day here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And right now Yvonne and I are on our way to what could be the hottest tourist attraction in all of Sao Paulo because we tried to book it last week actually and it was 100% sold out for like five or six That's days. Right. Yes. So nearly a week of fully booked. And so let's go check it out. Should be something worth seeing because it seems like everybody wants to do it. Okay, let's go. So by the way, I'm assuming Sampa means Sao Paulo? You know? Maybe. Me? It's is called it? Sampa Sky. I guess Sampa is like Sao Paulo. Hmm, okay. I'm actually Maybe. not sure. Maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nirvana. This is really scary. <laughs> okay, okay, Ivana. You wanna sit down? Sure. So guys, we've only got three minutes in this area. We booked our time. So we've really gotta get our Instagram photos, get our video clips. Whoa, something special. Ivana, do me a favor. Maybe lie on your back. Lie on your back and put your hair all over the glass. Yo. That's kind of beautiful though. I think I feel like we should dance, Ivana. Can we dance? No. <laughs> all right, so we have come to a place called Sampa Sky. Now to be clear, there's a huge area here full of people getting their Instagram photos and a couple of restaurants and places to get beers, lots of Instagram objects. Although, like I said, we've got one minute and a half per person on each of the platforms. So platform one, do a quick Instagram photo over here and then platform two. Let me tell you something, uh, worth the wait, worth the five day fully booked waiting period because even without the glass platforms, the view is incredible, but uh, this is some top-notch Instagram opportunities here. A little bit scary, a little bit scary, but it's worth it. It's funny because it's kind of nerve-wracking, and so you want to use the most of your minute and a half, yeah. but you're also nervous to be like, take a photo of me, take a photo of me. It's kind of scary, but you know it would be safe. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, platform two. Ivana doing her Instagram here. Very friendly lady helping us out. Yo, I tell you what, I keep feeling it's moving. It's not moving, right? No. She's been taking our photos. Special thanks to her. Uh, I am getting a little more nervous. I think it's true what they say, don't look down. Really, really don't look down. You stay up here, you're okay. And the minute I go like this, I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I tell you what, shout out to engineers. Good job. Okay. Good. Safe. Okay, back to uh, yeah. real safety. <laughs> All right, there you have it, guys. I would say worth the five day wait and the 80 hay ice each. Is that right? Oh, yeah, 80. 80 hay ice each. I think definitely worth it. Uh, the thing is, we have so many good memories of traveling naturally, right. but when you have good photos and good videos, you have even better memories. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. And one more thing is, there would actually be a World Cup party here. There is a viewing party. Unfortunately, fully booked. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't get tickets. But if you look down this view just over here, this whole strip here will be the FIFA Fan Fest. So you can imagine this whole area will be full of blue and yellow jerseys and people enjoying uh, Brazil's road to the World Cup. So we'll actually be down there rather than up here for the game. But yo, check this place out. Full of Instagram opportunities, full of clever little photo things, some Harry Potter and some <laughs> other interesting yeah. photos. By the way, this was Steve's idea. Yo, I don't regret it. <laughs> I am Steve's idea. frequently critical of Instagram, but when yeah. I saw this Instagram place, I said, this one is good. Let's go here. I would never have thought that Steve would like an Instagram spot. This is awesome. Let's go. Good memories, Thanks. would recommend. Absolutely would recommend. There's a reason there's a fully booked for a week at a time because it's awesome up here. 
might have won. All right, prepare for an obvious statement. But let me tell you something. Sao Paulo is seriously a massive city. Oh my gosh, from up here, you really get a sense of just how big 12 million people really is. Holy cow. Lots of buildings. Like as far <laughs> as the eye can see, building after building after building, uh, a yeah. huge concrete jungle. And I think after this, we should go to maybe learn more about this spectacularly massive city. Sounds good. Next stop, museum. Bye. So here we are at the National Monument of Independence, which is beautifully located just down this long street or long strip to the Ipiranga Museum. Now, unfortunately, we are not going to make it inside the massively beautiful Ipiranga Museum today. The story goes like this. Every Friday at 10 a.m., they open tickets for that week yes. to get into the museum. Yes. Ivana and I have been here for three Fridays now. Yeah. We are over three trying to get tickets. <laughs> so my assumption is they've just renovated this building. And by the way, the renovation is a great success because the building, the property, the landscaping, oh. everything about this park and the monument and the entire surrounding area is so massively beautiful. Mm -hmm. But my guess is during the renovation, it was closed for numerous years. And so now that it's open, everybody wants to get tickets and they're sold out in the first 30 minutes. Yes. True. Combine that with the fact that Ivana and I do not have a CPF. <laughs> now in Brazil, the CPF translates to something like natural person's registry. Uh -huh. It's like your identification number. To do a lot of things, you need a CPF. I know. We don't have one. So it can be hard to do things as a tourist sometimes, including the seemingly small in this image, but I assure you massive Ipiranga Museum. Now the good news is, I think when we leave Brazil in like two and a half months, uh, we'll probably leave from Sao Paulo. So maybe in two and a half months, we'll come back to Sao Paulo ah. a week early before our international flight. Yes. And we can try again, because I'd really like to go in the museum. It's unbelievably beautiful. And the entire walkway here going down to the, the monument. monument is really a special place to hang out. You can see lots of longboarders doing their things and young people enjoying a picnic or what have you on yet another lovely day in Sao Paulo. But <laughs> we have decided because we'll miss Ipiranga Museum, we're going to Ibipuera Park. Ibipuera Park, which has some other museums we can explore. Yeah. This is one of the best things about São Paulo. It's if your first option fails, there are lots of things to do. True. True. One true. of the reasons we love São Paulo. So come with us to Ibipuera. That's the place. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's it. Ibipuera. There you go. Muy <laughs> bon. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I think there's something in São Paulo for everybody and I think this park is a good example of that. So just around the corner up here, there's a skate park and honestly I could sit there and watch the skaters for like 10 more hours today. <laughs> Skateboarding is so difficult and those guys are so good. I was just sitting there absolutely loving it. Shout out to those skaters. Oh, so close. So whether you're into extreme sports like skateboarding mm -hmm. or whether you just want to lie under a tree and watch the clouds go by, there is lots to do in this park. I will try to pronounce it. I brew Prera Park. Ibipuera. I can't pronounce it, but I like to explore it. So if you guys <laughs> listen closely above our heads, you might actually hear a plane going by, which is a bit of a bummer because we cannot fly the drone. This place is dying for a drone shot because there are so many beautiful views and lots to do. Ivana and I have been keeping busy by admiring the trees. I know that sounds yeah. lame. Sounds like a 10 year old kid might do that. But obviously Brazil is one of the most mega diverse countries, meaning it has an incredible amount of biodiversity. Mm -hmm. And I love the way they've got signs at the bottom of the unique trees to tell you what kind of tree they are, country of origin and other stuff. Yeah. So Very we've good. been walking around like a couple of 10 year olds admiring and <laughs> enjoying the big trees. That's right. Which sounds lame, which is why I think there's something to do in this park for everybody. Yo, is this real right now? Look at the size of this tree and all the dangling. Whoa. 
I tell you what, I'm intrigued to go explore in here, but I think you go in there, you're not gonna make it out. Almost as haunted, no? Yo, that's a cool looking tree. <laughs> Now, we did see a building that looked like a spaceship. A UFO. UFO. Yeah. And evidently, helicopter. Yes. Uh, evidently, that building we saw was a planetarium, is my understanding. But rather than go there, we have learned that there is something up ahead that is called the Afro-Brazilian Museum. That's right. Which, with a name like that, I really want to go explore it and learn some more about the Afro-Brazilian Museum people here in Sao Paulo. I'll tell you what, uh, this park, very good park. I really like One it. of the better parks I've been to in my whole life. Uh, super massive and lots to do. I love it. So I love it too. Next stop, let's go to the Afro-Brazilian Museum. Let's go. Oh, shipment of coconuts. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's go. All right, so as it turns out, we just stumbled into somewhere very special. I would absolutely recommend the Afro Museum because it was very highly visual and highly engaging and very beautifully organized and I can't tell you how big it is. Oh yeah. Two floors and it's like as big as a warehouse. <laughs> and it's really good that it's so visual because um, unfortunately Yvonne and I do not speak Portuguese and you will not find much English in the museum. But that being said, we still understood what was going on. Yeah. It's the history of the uh, black people in Brazil. They've got a really yeah. nice section about the combining of traditional African religions with Christianity. That's right. Highly visual, highly interesting, and a really nice section on notable and influential Afro-Brazilians. Mm -hmm. Some of them I recognize, football players. Some of them I did not recognize, but my understanding is the most famous part of Brazilian culture in the whole world is probably Carnival. Yes. And it's influenced by Afro-Brazilians. That's right. So you really can't have Brazil without the Afro-Brazilian story. Yeah. And it's a really, really good museum. It really got me excited for our trip to Bahia, That's which true. is really Afro-Brazilians living there. The Afro-Brazilian culture is very rich in Bahia, I heard. We are really so. excited to learn more about the diversity in Brazil. Actually, we came to this park and we really appreciated the diversity of nature, uh, biodiversity. And then we came to this museum and we learned a lot more about the people group's diversity. That's right. So this is kind of one of the things we like most about Sao Paulo and Brazil in general. Yeah. Is diversity in people groups and diversity in uh, nature. And I guess, now that I think of it, uh, today's video is sort of the diversity or the many different options of all the things you can do. Yeah. Because the... Sampa Sky was fully booked for a whole week. <laughs> uh, Ipiranga Museum was a fail, mm -hmm. but when one door closes, one more opens, and we kind of missed the first museum, came here, and I absolutely love the Afro-Brazilian Museum. I love it too. It's so cool. Very good museum. Mm -hmm. You guys know I always say good museum, but this one was really, really good. Yeah. Despite the fact we couldn't read it, it was really something special to see. So I think this is what we love most about Brazil. Yeah, I think this so. This is sort of... Uh, Actually, a typical a, day yeah. in Brazil. In Sao Paulo, it's like from the concrete jungle to the nature jungle yeah. and a museum. Good point. You don't feel like you're in a concrete jungle anymore. The multiculturality of the city of Brazil. So I love it. Good. <laughs> Lots to do in Sao Paulo. So I guess today's video was uh, filled with a few fails. Things didn't work out. But in the end, had a great uh, experience. Mucho bong. Okay, there you have it, guys. We're going to keep wandering around this park. Probably go watch those skateboarders for another two hours. <laughs> and then we'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, pretty typical day and good day in Sao Paulo. Yes, I like it. Later, skaters. Upside down.